In this video, you will learn how to turn this into this. So we'll start in this empty project by creating a new node. So we'll just create an empty node. We can call it main. And then we'll create a child node here, also just a regular node, and we'll name it world generator. And in here, we'll create a script. So we'll click up here. And we'll just use the defaults and click create. And this is the script in which all the magic will happen. The first thing we need is a noise function. So we will create the noise function by adding a variable called noise. And then in the ready function that is called when the game is started, we will set this to noise equals fast noise light dot new. So what we have now is a noise function that given a set of coordinates, it will give back a noise value between about minus 0 0.4 and 0 0.4. So to map this into features in our procedurally generated world, Let's first create a function that maps these values into color buckets that can color the world. We'll do this by creating this function called get color from noise. It takes a noise value and then it buckets it into five different buckets that each returns a color value. Next, let's create the function that creates cubes in the world. This is going to be one of the biggest functions that we create, but it's not that complicated. It's basically the same thing as doing it from, from the UI, from the scene tree, but we will do it with code instead. So we'll create a function that we call create cube. And this takes a position and a color. First up, we need to create a variable called box size. And we'll set this to vector 3, 1, 1, 1. So it's going to be a cube with the side 1. Next, let's create static body, which we do by writing static body 3 b dot new. After that, collision shape 3D by collision shape 3D dot new. And then we set some settings on the collision shape. So we do collision shape 3D dot position equals the position we set into the function as a parameter. And we set the shape and we create a new box shape 3D object. And then lastly, on the collision shape, we set the size. And that's going to be the box size that we set here. Next, we'll create a mesh by mesh instance 3D.new. And then we'll do a box mesh. Oops. Box mesh. Box mesh dot new. And then we we'll set the size of the box mesh. Same as the box size we set earlier. And now let's create a material that can hold the color. So we'll do var material equals standard material 3d.new and then we set the color by doing material that albedo color equals color after that we'll set the material to the box mesh the material we just defined then we'll do mesh dot set mesh box mesh mesh.set 
position position and now we'll connect everything in the scene tree so we'll do static body.add child mesh and static body.add child collision shape 3d and then lastly we will add this as a child this whole box that we created to the world generator next up let's create a player so we will create a child node here we'll search for character character body 3d we'll give it a collision shape 3d we'll set it to a capsule shape and then we'll also create a sub child here that is a mesh instance 3d and we'll make that into a capsule and then to be able to see the world we will add a camera as a child to the character body 3d we'll pick camera 3d and then let's just move it back a little bit so that we can see ourselves like that that should be good now let's also create a world environment so we get some light into the world because if we play the game now there will be barely no light in here so let's create a world environment as a child to the main so by pressing ctrl a world environment and then environment new environment and in this environment let's go into background sky if we go into sky we select new sky and then sky material we select procedural sky material and now we can reload and it looks a lot better so let's go back into the world generation script and create a function that actually generates the boxes around the player we will call this function generate new tubes from position and it will take a player position as an argument and we will loop through now the range around the player that we are interested in so we'll do 4x in range we'll have a new constant called generation bound distance and we'll do it times two so let's go up here create a new constant generation bound distance and let's set it to eight for now so let's go back down here into the generate new cubes from position function and proceed so we'll do x plus equals player position dot x minus generation bound distance and just to quickly explain what's going on here the reason why we're doing generation bound distance times two is that we want let's say in the x axis we want to have this bound distance of eight both in the positive direction and in the negative direction so by taking this times two so 16 and then shifting it back by one generation bound distance that is eight we will have when the player is on x equals zero we'll have the bound from minus eight to plus eight So then we do for set in range generation bound distance times two. Same thing here, set plus equals player position dot set minus generation bound distance. 
and then we'll call a function here that we have not yet created but we'll call it generate cube if new on x and z position so first before implementing the real version of generate cube if new let's do a naive implementation just to show you what happens in the world it's going to cause some performance issues that we will have to find a workaround for so if we define generate cube if new like this we call create cube it takes a vector 3 for position and we'll give it the x 0 for now for y and then z and we use our get color from noise function and we use the noise generator that we defined earlier so we do noise dot get noise 2d and then we give it the x and the z positions then we need to call this when the game is started so we will do up in the ready function we will add generate new cubes from position which takes player position and now we need to find the actual player position here so we will do player equals get node player and we'll create this variable in the global scope and now we need to also name the character body player so that the code can find it we'll also need to create a script on the player so that it has physics and gravity so we'll do use the template the character body 3d basic movement template and then let's also move the player a bit above the ground since we're spawning the cubes on height zero so now we are on height 2.8 so now let's run this and see what happens so we can see here that we have the player there is a 16 by 16 world that we can move around in but it ends here so we have two options to expand the world either we set the bounds to a very high number or we can implement a smart feature to expand the world as we move so let's go with generating the world as the player moves so the easiest way we can do this is by simply reusing the generate new cubes from position function and calling it from the process function the process function is a function that is called on every frame meaning that as the game progresses on every frame that is calculated we will generate new cubes so let's try this and see what happens so as you can see we are actually generating new cubes but the frame rate is dropping and the performance is reducing. So let's fix this. So the reason why the performance is dropping is that on every frame, the game is generating 16 by 16 cubes. And that takes up memory, that takes calculations. And as the game progresses, we'll have more and more cubes in memory and the performance will get worse and worse. So the way we can work around this in this tutorial is by keeping track of where the game has generated cubes. And then we'll make sure to only create cubes in the case where it has not been created in that position before. So we'll keep track of this by creating a dictionary. Let's scroll up to the top, create a variable called generated 
cubes. And in the ready function, we'll create an empty dictionary. Generated cubes equals empty dictionary. Then let's create a new function. The job of this function will be to check if a cube has already been generated in this position. So let's call it function has cube been generated. We'll give it an X and a C coordinate and we'll check if X in generated cubes and set in generated cubes of X and generated cubes X set is true, then we will return true. So this means that the box has already been generated. Else, we will return false. The next function we need is the one that actually registers after cube creation in the dictionary that the cube has been generated. So we'll call this one register cube generation at coordinate x set. And we do if x in generated cubes. generated cubes x said equals true. Otherwise, we'll do generated cubes x equals a new dictionary where said equals true. So let's now proceed with enhancing the existing function generate cube if new with the functions that we just created. So what we want to do is check if not has cube been generated on the x and z position, then we can create a cube. And we also want to register that this has been done so that the next time we check on this position, we will not proceed and create a new cube. So let's add register cube generation at coordinate, and it's the same coordinate. Now let's have a look at what the world looks like. So it's the same, but the performance is not decreasing as we keep exploring the world. Let's tune this a bit to make it a bit more interesting for the player. As you saw in the intro, there was a varying heights in the environment. So let's add that. We can do that simply by going to the create cube here in create cube if new. Let's add a generated noise variable because we will use the noise not only in the get color from noise function, but also to decide the Y position of the generated cube, that is the vertical or the height where we put the cube. So let's do bar generated noise equals noise dot get noise 2D X and Z. And then we can add generated noise on the Y, vari y variable here. And we can replace this call to the noise function with a generated noise. So we reuse it. You will notice if I play this now that the differences in height are barely, barely visible. And this is because, as you recall, the range which the noise was between was minus 0.4 and 0.4, which is quite a small max and mean value range. So to make this more visible, let's add an amplitude 
actor into this. Let's simply do generated noise times vertical amplitude and add that as a constant. And we can do seven, for example. Let's play now and see what happens. And now it's a lot more visible that this world is actually going up and down in a seemingly random pattern. So there you have it. Let's do some final fine tuning to get this in a more playable state. And then we are finished for this tutorial. So let's up the generation bound distance to, for example, 64. We will still be certain that the player can explore practically infinitely, even though we don't always see the end of the horizon. So let's play the game now. And there you go. Now you have created your own procedurally generated world that is infinitely generating and can be explored infinitely far. So well done. If you liked the video, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And if you have any feedback or questions, please leave them in the, in the comments below and I will have a look at them. So what's next? I think this concept can be expanded on quite a lot. And this is just the beginning. Right now, the world looks quite bland. You just have some colored boxes and some height differences. But since we have access to a noise function and a random generator, we can translate and map the random values into whatever we want. It's only our imagination that sets the boundaries here. So you could have it generate trees, animals, characters, anything you want, basically. So I would uh, encourage you to, after doing this tutorial, trying to add something on yourself, like more colors to the boxes or maybe some generated items in the world. Another thing that is outside the scope of this tutorial, but something you might encounter with this game is that performance issues will come eventually because right now we're just generating these boxes and putting them into the world, but we don't actually have a way to reduce the memory footprint. I would encourage you to go and Google, like for example, how games like Minecraft have solved that issue. And that can, that can get you started on that journey. And I might create a tutorial on that in the future. Cool. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.